All right, we're back in the trees at Hyde Park and I've got a very good one for people looking for a sales job. I'm going to go through tips and structure for how the process works, what you can do to increase your chances and what you should do during each of the stages. This is for people who are looking for a sales job or perhaps they're in a sales job and they want a slightly better one because they didn't do a good job of getting one in the first place. Before we get in this video, I'm trying to add value to people that want to do sales remotely. So please, if you do, if you are that type of person, subscribe to this channel, like this video. Let's get on with it. The way this video is structured is before the interview. So before you apply, during the interview process and what to do after the interview process. Before we start this, let's frame this properly. This will help you understand the rest of the steps. What is a company hiring a sales person looking to do? The only thing they're looking to do is increase the profitability of their business. They want more new customers. A company looking for new customers doesn't care if the only thing you studied at uni was arse. They only care that you are a relentless hound that is money driven and is extremely good with people. So now that's clear, let's get on. Before you apply, you're gonna, if, you, if you do things the normal way, which I don't really think is the best way, which is apply online for a job, um, or you go through a recruitment agent. I'm not sure this is the best way, uh, to be honest. I, I've done both ways. I have gone in and done that interview process, but I found my, my, the favorite jobs I've had, I've talked to the business owner and explained why they should hire me. Um, but let's assume that you're going through, let's assume that you're going through the, the standard process, you've applied online to a sales job which is good because there's loads of them. It's bad because you're, you're competing with a lot of other people. But what relevant experience should you put on your CV? Uh, a tip for your CV, just to start with, keep it to one page. A little bit about education, a little bit about skills, but mostly about your actual sales experience. If you don't have sales experience, I'm gonna make another video on how you can go out and get the sales experience, which will land you pretty much any sales job. Okay, just quickly, what that is, is you go out on the street and you talk to 100 people and you try and sell them a particular service. And you do this day after day for oh, two weeks, three weeks. Yeah, so you've clocked up 2,100 2, people, 2,500 people. Then when you're in the interview, you can say, I went out and talked off my own back to 2,500 people that is relentless. Most people would not do that. Okay. It's a nice dog behind me. So relevant experience. They don't care about your university. They only care about sales experience. So yes, you can have your education in there because it does get you past a lot of benchmarks. But the main meat of this CV needs to be, okay, I was in this particular sales uh, scenario. I talked to the customer. I find it, found out what they want this was the process yeah your experience on this cv has to be purely sales focus purely numbers purely communication if you have a job that you did before what particular areas of that job were sales focused and another good one if you've already been in a sales role which i know this isn't what this video is for but get your numbers down how many people did you call what was your closing rate you know how many times did you follow up what is your preferred follow-up cadence? That actually might not be a good one to include. But the experience, it shouldn't be the same CV that you've sent out to 100 jobs. It should be sales focused. These are my numbers. These are the sales things that I've done. This is how I could help your business. Yeah. The second thing to do before you get to the interview is understand their business. How many times have you heard of friends go for a job and you ask, did you, um, did you look up the company before you applied? And they say, no, I was just going to wing it on the day. Bad idea. Spend half an hour going to their website, find out what they do. Who are their customers? Who are their competitors? How are they serving clients? What service do they offer? What is the value that they give to their customers? 
Why do you need to know this? This is so that when you are in the interview and you start leading questions, which we'll get onto in a minute, you actually have something relevant to talk about with them so you can demonstrate, hey, yeah, I understand the value that you're adding and I understand the kind of things that I would need to ask a potential client in order to get them over the line. So that's before the interview, which is make sure your CV is purely sales focused and then make sure you understand their business. If they ask for a cover letter, which I hate, um, which is why I never really go through the normal process to get one of these jobs. Uh, make sure your cover letter is relevant to the kind of people that they're targeting and what they're trying to do. Next, this is during the interview process. This is not a passive process. This should be you interviewing them. You have half an hour. Hopefully, it's with the owner of the business. If it's not, hopefully, it's with the head of sales. They know what a good salesperson looks like. A good salesperson in a call with a client isn't sat there passively waiting for the customer to talk. They're sat there asking leading questions. Yeah. So when you are in the interview, you need to treat this as if you're pitching a potential client, which is what you're doing. They are your potential client and you're pitching them. So ask leading questions. When they ask you a question, respond, and then follow up with, if it's appropriate, your question. And what you wanna do here is demonstrate that you're interested in the progress of the business. So the questions that you should be asking these people what direction is the company going? What are the revenue targets of the business? What, what have been some extremely good successes that you've had that maybe I can emulate when I'm in, on board? Get them talking. You want to find out, is this a good company I want to work with? It's a big commitment from your part. So that's the questions. Those are the questions you should be asking. This is one that I found very good. Another thing that they're looking for is, can you close? And so if towards the end of the interview, when you've done all your leading questions and you found out, okay, yeah, we fit together, push for the job. So if they say to you, thank you, Alex, thank you so much for your time. This has been really interesting. You'll hear from us. Try and get in. Oh, this is great. I've really loved this too. I think we're a good fit for each other. Is there a way that we can come to an agreement now because I really would like to work for your company. I can so see myself adding value. You haven't just left it up to them, you've pushed for the close. Any decent salesperson will see this and think, oh, that is exactly what I'm looking for on the call with a potential client. Only do this if you've had good rapport or if you're actually on the interview process with a decision maker. That's another core skill of sales, which is getting on call with a decision maker. If you don't know what that means, you should look this up. That reminds me actually, a little bit to add just before uh, you're on the interview, spend a good amount of time learning different sales terminology. What is a BDR, business development rep? What is an SDR, sales development rep? How do they work together? What is a close? What's a lead in question? What's a potential client? What's a, you know? Learn the sales te uh, terminology. A good place to do this is on Reddit, funny enough. Reddit, go to the sales subreddit. Loads of information on there. Learn those before. Let's go back. So you've asked your, le le you've asked your leading questions. You've pushed for the close. I've even, I've even negotiated a salary on the very first interview with a sales job that I got because I pushed for the close and the business owner I was on the phone with thought, this is exactly what I'm looking for. A relentless, money-driven, good with people that can push for the close and is happy to talk money on the phone. That is a golden asset to a business. You are the golden asset of the business if you can demonstrate that you can do this. And that's how you get the bigger money in a sales role. That's how you get the good commission. It's how you get the remote working arrangement so that you can be anywhere you want taking sales calls. That's what we're after, right? Remote sales jobs. So you've asked the questions, you push for the close. Let's say you didn't get the job immediately on the call. 
if you don't successfully sell a client on the call, what would you do? You'd follow up. You wouldn't just leave it up to them. You'd set a cadence and every three days, you'd get in contact, them, contact with them with something valuable, okay? Something that will make you stand out, stand out beyond 99% of the people doing the jobs is if three days after the interview, you reach out to those people and you say, thank you so much for your time on the call. You should actually say, thank you so much for your time on the call pretty much straight after. You reach out in three days, thank you so much for your time. Um, any news on the job or any other information that you require from me. Basically, you want to go straight into a sales cadence with them. I don't think I explained that pretty uh, well enough there. But you want to treat them as a potential client from your business and follow up with them every three days. Even better, it's a bit presumptuous, but if you find something extremely valuable, you want to send that through and say, I just thought you might find this interesting. This is something I think is valuable. That demonstrates that you understand their business, what they're doing, and something that can make it better. Need I say more on that? No. And that's about it. You want to get your relevant ex sales experience in your CV. CV should be short. No one, no one reads the full 17 pages you've written. They don't care. The mindset you want to have and you want to convey to them, which is what they're looking for, you're a relentless, money-driven, good-with-people hound, basically. And you will just relentlessly keep going and going and going. On the call, ask questions. Treat them like a customer. You're interviewing them. Ask leading questions. Where's their business? Find the gap. Where are they now? What are they looking for? If there's a gap there and it's a sufficiently large gap and they think you can be the salesperson that gets them there, they're going to hire you. That's what they're hiring for. Push for the close. Be respectful. Accept if they say no. If they say no, follow up sequence. It's really that simple.